The Fairy and the Angel Once there was a girl called Molly, and it was nearly Christmas, so she was very excited. She lived in a cottage at the top of a hill with her mum and her dad and their little dog Turpy. Mum and dad had bought a big Christmas tree. They had decorated it with stars and baubles and lights and tinsel. All they needed now was something to set on the top. Usually at Christmas, the cottage was filled with aunts and uncles and cousins and Molly's grandparents. But this year, sadly, things had to be different. For reasons that Molly did not quite understand, none of her friends or relatives could visit. The Prime Minister, no less, had said so. So it would be just her, her parents, little Turpy and the wonderful tree. Her grandparents sent their cards and presents, though, and each of them sent a small box marked Urgent. Open now. Molly was allowed to open the two boxes. In one, there was a beautiful beaming angel with curling hair and dazzling blue eyes. For the top of the tree, a note said. In the other box, there was a beautiful shiny fairy with green skin, black hair and dazzling brown eyes. For the top of the tree, a note said. Oh no, said Molly to her mum, looking at the two decorations. Which one shall we choose? They're both so pretty. I don't know, mum said. You decide. I've got to go out and do some panic buying. Oh no, said Molly to her dad. Which one do I choose? They're both so beautiful. I don't know, dad said. You decide. I've got to go out and set the attic up so that I can work remotely from home. Molly looked at the green fairy and the white angel, but she just couldn't decide which one should go on top of the tree. She set them both beneath the tree and decided that she would make up her mind in the morning, and off she went to bed. In the middle of the night, Molly woke up. She thought she could hear voices, and there was light seeping through the crack beneath her bedroom door. Being a brave girl, she went out on the upstairs landing. Sure enough, there were voices coming from down in the living room. To her amazement, there was some kind of meeting going on. The fairy and the angel were standing in the middle of the floor before the tree, and all the dolls and bears were sitting in a circle, listening and paying attention. It should be me, said the fairy. I am a tree spirit. I am the light that shines in all of nature. I bring happiness and magic to children. I should go on top of the tree. Some of the dolls and bears nodded and murmured in agreement. It should be me, said the angel. I am the light of heaven, and God has sent me to the earth. One day I'll bring peace and joy to all mankind. I should go on top of the tree. The dolls and bears nodded and murmured, and seemed to be discussing the matter. I know, said Grumpy Bear, Molly's battered oldest and most favourite Teddy. Let her decide. He nodded toward Molly, who he had spotted sitting at the bottom of the stairs. Yes, come here, you decide, said the angel, who was in fact quite a bossy thing. Yes, please come and choose, pleaded the fairy, whom Molly was taking quite a liking to. If you choose me, said the angel, I'll give you the reward of eternal peace and joy in heaven. Hmm, said Molly. That sounded quite promising. If you choose me, said the fairy, I'm afraid I can only offer you three wishes. She looked down sadly, realising that the angel seemed the better offer. Now Molly, though young, was quite wise, and was not one to be swayed by appearances. I choose you, she said to the fairy. The fairy beamed and smiled. The angel frowned. Some of the dolls and teddies chattered and clapped, others shaking their heads in disappointment. It was always the same with this sort of thing. The results were always so unpredictable. But I'll make my wishes now, said Molly. Then perhaps you'll see why. 
She breathed in, closed her eyes and stood on her tiptoes. First, I wish for eternal peace and joy in heaven, if there is one. Secondly, I wish for every single person in the land to have as bright and happy and merry a Christmas as possible. All the toys and teddies chattered and clapped at this, and even the angel had a smile. Thirdly, she said, I wish for another Christmas tree identical to this one and right next to it. Upon her wish, another tree appeared, identical to the first, right down to the last star and bauble. On top of one tree, Molly set the angel, and on the other she set the fairy. Then she yawned, tidied up the toys, and went back up to bed. The next morning, her parents were most surprised to see two trees with little Turpy snug in his basket between them. Molly, of course, was delighted that it had not all just been a dream. The white angel and the green fairy looked splendid, both smiling away from the tops of their trees. In fact, they went on to become great friends. And although it wasn't the greatest Christmas ever without all her family there, Molly enjoyed every minute of it. She wished and she hoped and she prayed that everybody else would be enjoying their Christmas just as much as she was hers. <laughs>